bet on Drew? Oh, that's right. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that's why I was like kind of looking at you funny. I'm like, dang, man, that hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. so familiar. In this hand, we're in the small blind. We look down at 10, seven off at a super fun and friendly table. Uh, there's two limps. I complete and we go check, check. The flop comes queen, 10, deuce, rainbow. I check, the big blind makes it 10. Everyone calls, I'm in there too with second pair, not giving up quite yet. The turn comes a six of spades, I check. Big blind checks and the two limpers preflop also check. The turn comes a three and I check, big blind checks. The first limper checks, but then the last limper bets 35 bucks, which is about half the size of the pot. And there was a way that this guy threw in his chips that it looked like, oh, I just need to bet to bet. It was uh, very sloppy and it was kind of like a live read I had. So I decided to call and I didn't think the other players were going to call anyway. Then there's two folds behind and I end up winning versus the ace five offsuit. So now this hand puts our stack up to 630 bucks. And the big blind is announcing that they actually had a 10 as well. And if I didn't call, they were going to call. So I'm happy we called. <laughs> in this hand, we look down at the beautiful pocket aces. We are in the small blind again. There is a raise late position from somebody who's been quite quiet, but uh, playing what seems to be a solid strategy. I uh, three bet to 100 after they raised to 30 from the cutoff. There was also a limp in middle position. And the limper folds and the cutoff calls the 100. So we are going to a flop. The flop comes six, seven, nine with two hearts. I look, and I think this is one of those situations where when we're raising with like ace, king, ace, queen, and we miss here, it like kind of sucks to see this flop. So I check, balancing my checking range here, basically protecting my checking range here, because we just check here so much on this flop, I feel like. So it was nice that I actually had a hand that I could get a little tricky. And I thought this player might get a little bit aggressive. They had enough chips to do so. But I decided to check here. And then the cutoff bets 150 bucks, which I was really happy to see. Really happy to see. Also on this flop, they could still have uh, pocket tens and jacks, hands that maybe don't want to play for stacks pre-flop that they could feel comfortable with. They could have flush draws. And I take a second here, think about it, and I do decide that I want to jam. I have 400 in my stack, they bet 150, so it's only 250 more. Again, there's so many hands that they're betting this flop and then calling with us uh, versus us here. Unfortunately, though, this player folds. And yeah, but still good for us because now our stack is up to about uh, 850, 900 bucks at this point. So a good start to this session. So I look down at Jax. I raise in the cutoff to 15 bucks. We have a call in late position from our friend. The uh, button calls as well. A very nice, um, fun lady to play with here. She had a really good energy, so it was a really enjoyable table. Anyway, the flop comes 779 rainbow. I decide to continue for 35 bucks and both of them call. The turn comes in eight and it does bring backdoor hearts in and I decide to continue. I do still think that I have the best hand with pocket jacks and it is unlikely that somebody has jack 10 and giving my holdings. And with the size of the pot as it is, I decide to bet a hundred and ten bucks. And then the cutoff here, again, our friend who was in this hand, decides to fold. It takes him a minute, but he decides to fold. And then the button she calls. And the river comes a nine. And at this point, I'm like, okay, what am I value betting? I'm hoping that this lady has pocket tens, basically. 
or maybe an ace eight that had backdoor flush draw on the flop and hit a pair of eights and decided to get sticky and call the 110. It's not likely. Looking back at it now, I don't know if I love my river bet, though, relative to the pot, I only bet 140 bucks, so I kind of sized down, hoping to get called by worse. Uh, she has about 250 behind at this point, too, so I didn't want to put her all in. She calls and shows the 10-7 offsuit. She flopped trip sevens, and then my buddy to the left actually had a 9x that he folded on the turn. He would have obviously won the hand when the additional 9 came. And now I got about 620 behind, and it is what it is. You know, just what are you going to do? Never putting her on a seven there. But again, I think there's a conversation to be had around me betting the river, though I did bet smaller to get called by worse. We look down here under the gun, plus one at king, five suited. We make a loose open. Again, I think it's a soft table, so I'm going to play some hands, especially like this. I make it 15. Our buddy to our left calls and the big blind defends. The flop comes queen, 10, 9, all spades. Pretty sick. The big blind checks. I make it 20. Our friend behind folds. And then the big blind makes it 60. And this is not a bet that a casual player in the big blind is making that is weak. So they have some sort of hand. And I'm like, no way you have the ace high flush, even though obviously it's a possibility. But I'm like, come on, man, what are the odds? And at this point, I'm like, okay, I don't want this board to get worse in the event that they have two pairs set straight, whatever big hand they have. Uh, maybe they have top pair queen with the ace of spades, whatever it is. They're just never folding when they do this. And he uh, didn't have too much behind. He made it 60 with about 100 behind. So I go all in. He quickly calls for his last 100. And the turn oh, is a jack of spades. I turn a straight flush in this. It was insane. And they actually had flopped the straight. They had jack eight off. We got the board for you here, so you can see it. Pretty sick, especially playing live poker to hit a straight flush. We pick up a nice pot there, and Gentleman reloads, and we are now sitting on 755 in chips. I look down at King Queen off in the hijack, raise it up to 15. My friend on the button decides to call, and we are going heads up to the flop. The flop is going to come Queen 9 Jack with two hearts. I have the Queen of Hearts and the King of Clubs. So we have top pair and a decent back door flush draw. Now on the Queen Jack Nine flop, I do think that I could be ahead here a bit. I also think that his flatting range could connect with this board quite a bit. So uh, since I'm out of position, I actually decided to check. I'm not sure if I love the check. I definitely think that this player was a bit more capable than some others at the table. If it was a more recreational player, I'm definitely continuing to bet this flop. But versus this player, since he was a bit more capable, I decided to control the pot since I was out of position here. And I checked. He checked as well. And then we go to the turn. The turn is a offsuit jack. So the flush does not come in, but I don't love the turn because I do think that they're going to have a lot of jack X in this situation. I check. He makes it 15. Small bet. I definitely have to call into uh, this pot. And then we go to the river. The river is the ace of diamonds. Not the best river for us in the event that he had ace 10, any backdoor ace X. Maybe he's betting ace eight of hearts. Or something on the turn. It's just it's just not a good river card for us. I check and he makes it 40. So into this pot, it is not that massive. It's about half pot or so. I take a minute and think about if I am going to be good here. I do block the nut straight, which is King 10. And King Jack is a bit less likely, given my holdings as well. Uh, I do block some of the bluffs that he might have with me holding the king. So it's kind of a dodgy spot. I'm really not sure how I wanted to ultimately decide 
in this situation, given my holdings and kind of the way the hand played out. He didn't bet big enough, I think, for me to not be able to make a profitable call here sometimes, especially if I think he's bluffing at some sort of frequency. Some random casual player who's just playing their cards, you know, maybe I find a fold here. But uh, ultimately, I did decide to pay him off, even though he did have my number tonight. And I throw in the 40 bucks, I make the call, and I actually win here. He has king six of clubs, which I was relieved to see. And he was thinking the same thing. He makes a comment after about how he had uh, he blocked the straight and stuff. And yeah, he didn't block hearts, so uh, he started firing on the turn. But we did pick up a pot here, and we are now sitting on $789 in chips. Now we look down at five seven of hearts in the big blind. There's an early position open, a call, and I decide to toss it in here. I like my hand, suited, connected, pretty. We're already in for five. So we call, and the flop comes ace, three, four, rainbow. So we have a gut shot. We do have backdoor hearts. We decide to check. The initial raiser makes it 15. The lady who called folds. And it get back, gets back to me, and I'm not going anywhere. So I toss in a 15, and we are going to the turn. The turn comes in offsuit 10. So our backdoor flush has not come in. We go check, check pretty quickly. And the river comes a five. So we now have a pair. And I think that if anybody's going to have a two here, the majority of the time, I think it's going to be me and not him, unless he has a stew suit that he happened to be opening. I decide to check. And then he makes it 30. And I do think that a lot of players, especially more capable players are going to take the line of bet check bet and it's going to be value heavy he could have some weak ace x that he opened here that wants to take this line because they know they can't get three streets of value so i think that's a possibility and considering the fact that i could have way more twos than him i was sitting here thinking i should raise i should not call though i know that he's likely got an ace x here or a I don't know that he's bluffing too much on this run out again. So I know that I should have raised, but uh, I think I get a fold that way. And for some reason here, I'm trying to remember what exactly I was thinking in game that I didn't raise. I thought that he could have some bluffs and maybe some King high who wanted to get me to fold some random three or four that he checked to turn king queen queen jack that picked up a gut shot decided to check turn and knew that oh maybe this is a good river to bluff i gotta fire because you know i gotta get his like three and four and my weak hands to fold and i think i ultimately landed on this guy was capable of just over c betting flop and checking turn with a gut shot and then having to fire his way out of it on the river so i felt like i didn't need to bluff even though uh, I really think after thinking about the hand afterwards and even now, I think I should have, if I was going to do anything, I think it's fold or raise. And yeah, we ended up losing to ace eight off suit here. So yeah, big, big important message there. The bet check bet line, and I talk about this a lot on stream, is typically a value line with a top pair hand that has a weak kicker and doesn't think that they can get three streets of value. Now, if it is a bit more of a casual player, I have found historically that those players will take the bet check bet line, meaning bet flop, check turn, bet river, when they do actually have a hand that I was hoping this guy had, king, queen, queen, jack, something like that. But we do end up losing here. Uh, we are now sitting on 619 in chips. And would you believe it here? We look down at nine five off in the big blind and we have something to talk about. <laughs> so there is a raise to 15 in middle position, cutoff calls, and these are two casual players, recreational players. So I am going to get splashy and play along and just, you know, play better than them post flop. That's the plan. And it was kind of a fun table. The guy across who had opened, who was uh, very fun, him and I were going back and forth and betting like 
two bucks, five bucks on, you know, uh, cars that were coming out on the flop. So anyway, I decided to give some action here. The flop comes two, seven, four with two spades. It checks around. The turn comes a 10 of spades. And I have the nine of spades in my hand. So I have one to a flush and a fake straight draw. <laughs> I don't have eight, nine, but uh, a bit less likely somebody else has eight, nine, right? You know what I'm saying? And since the flop checked around, I decided to lead the turn for 15. And I'm planning to bet twice here. And the fun guy calls. And then the late position player folds. Now the river comes a jack. The spades brick out. And since I have a nine in my hand, it's a bit less likely that uh, this player is eight, nine. And I also don't think he looked at this point. But I know I had to obviously I have nine high. I got to bet my way out of this one. I decided to make it look value betty. And I bet 30 bucks on the river. Uh, he finally looks at his cards. And he's thinking, he's thinking, and he shows a two and decides to fold. And I win with my nine high. And again, it was just a really fun game. And sometimes you got to just like be splashy. I don't know. But <laughs> we pick up this pot and we did lose a couple of hands at this point. But we end up finishing this session uh, at, with around 500 bucks. So uh, we blasted off early with the uh, friend to our left for about 400 ish and we added on so down about uh four or 500 bucks this session so after last night booking a session which we did not end up vlogging tonight we ended up losing we started with a thousand and chips playing to five here at bellagio and we ended up cashing out 495 after about four hours of playing so down little over 500 bucks, 505. But it was a good game. It was super friendly, super fun. We were betting on flops and everybody was like really cheerful. And yeah, it was a super fun game. So we did lose, which kind of sucks. And the Vegas trip has been tough uh, as far as financials go or money, whatever, uh, so far. But it's been a really good time. And you know, I can't complain. I really enjoy Bellagio's poker room. This has been a lot of fun. The games have been great. It's actually Labor Day weekend. So there has been a ton of tables. And yeah, action's been great. Unfortunately, we didn't book a win today, but we will be back for more action. So if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and drop me a comment. I hope you enjoyed it. Hey everybody, thanks for making it to the end of my video. No one does that, do they? All right, look, I respond to comments, so please leave a comment below the description and let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, check out some of my last videos here and don't forget to hit the subscribe button here. All right, my name is Drew. Peace out. Catch up with you later.